Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on cross sections. Our objective is once again to identify and draw three dimensional figures. Our vocabulary startup a prism is a three dimensional figure with at least two parallel congruent faces called bases that are polygons. A pyramid is a three dimensional figure with one base that is a polygon. Its other faces are triangles. Write prism or pyramid on the line below each figure. Well, our first, we have a rectangular base, and then we do have rectangular faces. So we have our rectangular base here, and then we have rectangular faces as well. So that makes that a prism. Also something special about these faces, they're parallel and congruent. So this face is parallel with the face back there, and this face here is congruent and parallel to that face there. What about our next shape? Well, we have a base that's a polygon, looks to be a square or a rectangle, but the faces are all triangles. And since these faces are all triangles, this is what's called a pyramid. Then, our next objects, we look to have a triangular base and triangular faces. So that is also a pyramid. Our next object, well, we have what looks to be a rectangular base, and we have a rectangular face here and here, but those aren't parallel. Well, this face and this face are parallel, and they are triangles, but we have a mix here of a triangle and rectangular faces. And since we have a mix, that makes this a prism. So to summarize, the difference between a prism and a pyramid, a prism will always have at least two parallel faces. A pyramid, they have faces that are triangles only. It's a big difference between these two. Now the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is shown at the right, is the building a prism or a pyramid, and explain. Well, it looks like we have our base down here, but all the faces that we can see appear to be triangles. And so we're going to call this a pyramid. And for a reason, the shape has one base, with triangular faces. Let's continue on. Identify three-dimensional figures. A plane is a flat surface that goes on forever in all directions. The figure at the right shows rectangle ABCD. Line segments AB and DC. So AB and DC are coplanar because they are in the same plane. This thing here, this green shape, that's representing a plane. They're also parallel because they will never intersect, no matter how far they're extended. And you could take AB and go out forever, and DC and go out forever, and those will never intersect. Just as two lines in a plane can intersect or be parallel, there are different ways that planes may be related in space. Two planes can intersect in a line. As you can see, this plane intersects with this plane in a line. They can intersect in a point, or there can be no intersection if they're parallel planes. Now, 
intersecting planes can form three-dimensional figures. A polyhedron is a three-dimensional figure with flat surfaces that are polygons. Prisms and pyramids are both polyhedrons. Some terms associated with three-dimensional figures are edge, face, vertex, and diagonal. The edge is where two planes intersect in a line. So you can almost imagine this being a plane and this being a plane and they intersect in a line. The face is a flat surface, and we have a whole bunch of those here. A diagonal is a line segment whose endpoints are vertices that are neither adjacent nor on the same plane. A vertex is where three or more planes intersect at a point. Well, if we call this a vertex here, look for the three planes. We would have this, this, and then the bottom. So again, the side here, the front, and the bottom all come to intersect at that point. There are also solids that are not polyhedrons. A cylinder is a three-dimensional figure with two parallel congruent circular bases, as you can see, connected with a curved surface. A cone has one circular base connected by a curved side to a single vertex. Now here's a little nice handy list of common names of polygons, five pentagon, seven hexagon, or heptagon. Wait a minute, there's a mistake there. Seven's not hexagon. Let's fix that. Six is hexagon. Seven would be heptagon. Eight octagon, nine nonagons, and ten are decagons. So what we'll one thing you're going to be asked to do in this lesson is to identify the figure by its name and then name the bases, faces, edges, and vertices. So the figure here in example one has two parallel congruent bases that are triangles, so it's a triangular prism. Bases does not always mean bottom. That's going to be one of the things we're going to have to get over. Basis does not always mean bottom. So we have these two triangular bases, and they are A, B, E, and F, C, D. Well, that leaves us with the other faces. We still can name A, B, E, and F, C, D as faces as well. But then we have B, C, D, E as a face. We have the bottom that looks like F, A, E, D as a face, and then we have A, B, C, F, that back side as the other face. Now, one strategy on these, it might be helpful to say, okay, I have one, two, the front three, the bottom four, and the back five. If you can count the number of faces you have, and then go to list them, you at least will have the correct number of faces listed. Your edges, a whole bunch of them. We would have AB, BE, EA, FC here in the back, CD, and DF. We have BC, ED, and lastly, AF. So there, we appear to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 edges. And our vertices might be the easiest one. We have A, B, C, D, E, and F as our vertices. As we move on to a guided example, two, the figure has one base that is a pentagon. You can see our base, that's a pentagon, five sides. And the sides are all, the faces are all triangles, and they meet at one point. So we can say that is a pentagonal pyramid. The base, usually it's easiest to do this in alphabetical order, so R, S, T, U, V, 
The faces start with the base, R, S, T, U, V, and then you have those other triangles. You have five other triangles. As you can see, Q, V, R is one. Q, R, S, two triangles. Q, S, T, three triangles. Q, T, U, four triangles. Q, U, V is our fifth triangle. It could be helpful to know that, okay, I'm dealing with the pyramid. It's pentagonal, and so that means I'm going to have five other faces besides the base. It's a pentagonal pyramid, pentagon five, so I'm going to have five more sides on top of the base. Our edges, you can see as they're listed, and the vertices, you can see as they're listed as well. The figure has a rectangular base here in example three, so it's a rectangular prism. Now, there is a common error that we do need to notice here. In the drawing of a rectangular prism, the bases do not have to be on the top and bottom. Any two parallel rectangles are bases. In a triangular prism, any face is a base. So, we could have A, B, C, D as one potential base. Well, that would link up as E, F, G, H as the other base. But what if we called A, B, F, E as the base over here? Well, that would mean D, C, G, H would be the other base. However, what if we called A, D, H, E here the base? Well, that would mean B, C, G, F would be the other base. It's not that they're all bases. I mean, they all could be bases. It's just one of those, well, if we decide that this is our base up front, then the one in the back is the other base. So there's a lot of ors here. There's nothing ors about the faces. All one, two, three, four, five, six faces. And then our edges and our vertices. Now let's see if we can do this problem on our own. The figure name, well, it appears that we have a triangular base here, and we have one, two, three triangles coming up to a point K. So it's a pyramid, and there's a triangular base, so we're going to call this a triangular pyramid. Our base down here, J, M, L, we'll just call that J, M, L, which leaves us the faces, we'll start with your base, J, M, L, and then we'll have, we'll go to the front, let's do J, K, L, Let's do J, M, K here in the back. And what does that leave us with? How about K, M, L there in the back? Our edges are plentiful. We have J, K. Might as well just work our way around. K, L and LJ and then we have this one getting us to the back JM from the back up here ML and then lastly we have KM and all of these edges are segments so we need to have our land segment sides over them our vertices, we have J, K, L, and M. Again, J, K, L, and M are our vertices. Now if we zoom back out here, the last part of our lesson deals with identifying cross-sections. The intersection of a solid and a plane is called a cross-section of the solid.
So we'll be asked to describe the shape resulting from a vertical, angled, and horizontal cross-section of a square pyramid. Well, first we need to picture a square pyramid. and well, Luckily, we have a square base meeting at the top, so we have our square pyramid. A vertical slice takes us straight through it, up and down. You can picture here that we have a triangle as that cross-section. The angled slice, you can see how it comes in at the angle. And the cross-section, here, 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 is a trapezoid. And a perfect horizontal slice, we have a square that matches the base of the pyramid, just a little smaller. So describe the shape resulting from a vertical, angled, and horizontal cross-section of a cylinder. Now, it would certainly be helpful to have a picture of a cylinder here, and so cylinders have circular bases. Almost think of a soup can. I'm going to go ahead and try my best, again, with my wonderful drawing skills here, to draw a couple of these. Yeah, those are... Wonderful, wonderful cylinders. Anyways, a vertical section, a vertical cross section. Well, that would be coming in straight up and down here. And it, that vertical slice would result in a rectangle. So the vertical slice is a rectangle. What about the angled slice? Well, when we come in at an angle here, what are we really cutting out? Well, it would appear that we're cutting out an oval here. So this is going to be an oval. And lastly, our horizontal slice what are we cutting out here? Well, it would be the same thing as the base, which is a circle. So our horizontal, we can go ahead and call a circle. So these can be tough to visualize at first, but the more you work with them, the easier it will become to picture what is going on with our cross-sections. That's it. Good luck.